Good morning, my name is Gerardo Escamilla and today I'm going to show you how to bring more dimensions into your data set. And this is in order to create better insights, to be in control of your data, to understand what you're going to, uh, to do with it. And um, I'm going to get a little bit technical here, but bear with me. So let's start by looking online for monthly electricity data. Uh, this is just an example from the International Energy Agency. They publish every single month electricity statistics. And um, there are different ways to look at this information, but one of them that we're going to be using today is the Excel file. There's a Excel file filled with macros, filled with different tabs across the, uh, the bottom here, as you can see. It's a pretty good file. It has great information. You can see the table of contents to understand exactly what you have here. You're going to see the total balance of electricity production for every single region of the world by the OECD standards and the IEA you will see the electricity information. And the way that you're gonna see this is the trade of electricity, where is the energy coming from, what type of energy source, but also you can see it for all of these countries down below. The thing with this particular file is that you have the data set in different tabs. I can go here in this tab and see the total for the OECD, uh, how much uh, electricity is being produced from conventional thermal, from coal, from oil, natural gas, uh, combustible renewables, hydro, so on and so forth, and then the imports and the exports until finally you get the electricity supplied minus how much was used for pumping storage and the losses of the network as well with a final number of electricity consumption. Now this is uh, shown here per month for the current month. So every month they give you an update. Today we're going to see April 2018 are what hours they give you a change of year over year so this is the change from april 2017 to april 2018 and moreover this is the change from march 2018 to april 2018 also you can see the share this share is the percentage of how much electricity does this represent out of a hundred percent of the total net production and also you have more information like um, the production year to date from this year, from last year, the change in percentage, and then uh, the totals from 2017 from the last year. So that's great. A lot of information. This is the same information that you have if you go for each tab, OECD Americas, uh, the total of IEA countries, Australia, Austria, and then you go country by country. When you look at this information, these data points in Excel, they're literally just data points. There are just numbers embedded into the cells. That's it. There are no formulas or anything like that. You have charts as well. These charts uh, come from specific values. And my guess is that all of this is being built with macros. So we're going to give uh, the benefit of the doubt and say in that every single tab, every single chart, every single piece of information here, uh, once you have the master data set, you can click a button and it updates automatically. But I think we can give it a little bit more and we can uh, provide a bit of interesting dimension to all of this information. There is one specific table. This table is table data one. Basically, you have a source uh, column where you have the region or the country point type of energy supply that is producing electricity. And then to the right side, there's just a bunch of numbers, which are the terawatt hours or gigawatt hours of electricity being produced per month. This is the data set that I want to understand what it is, how to use it. And, and there are three dimensions to this data set. One is the actual numbers here. These numbers represent the electricity output. Then the second one is the dates. And the third one, you have the different fuel type or the energy source. And finally, you have the country or the region in the same column here. However, it's all combined. And uh, the objective here is to create something that is usable and flexible. Um, the main problem that I see with uh, information like this, and you're going to find this in any organization when you have uh, reports that come in Excel files, is that they are mostly not flexible. Uh, you have uh, databases that need to be updated manually, or you need to do a lot of calculations, work around with macros. It's just a mess all the time. And it's one of the main problems of many organizations I work with. What we're going to do today is we're going to remove that problem of flexibility. And we're going to create something that is flexible and increase the productivity of anyone using this file. If we go here, Power Pivot is an add-in from Microsoft uh, to Excel. It's completely free and it's part of Microsoft. What it does is that it allows you to create data models. 
I have a table of all the countries in the world from the UN and from the OECD. Then I have a table for all the different dates where every single row is a different date. And then I have uh, for the different types of energy sources that you have in the data set. And finally, the electricity tab here, which is the main data set. And now I have a column that is only the country or the region, a column that only gives me the type, a column that gives me the month, and a column that gives me the final value. You can create here what it's called measures or calculated fields. So that means that I created one formula that is using the sum of one table divided by the maximum value of a completely different table. But in Excel, you cannot make something like this flexible. You're gonna have to use index, match, VLOOKUPs, macros here and there, and it becomes even more complex if you not only have like these four different uh, dimensions of your data, but maybe you have more dimensions here. In Power Pivot, you can. You only set up production one time and that's it. Power Pivot allows you, as I said before, to create data models. If you go to this diagram view right here, in this diagram view, what we see is every single box here is one data set or every single box rather is one table that I have somewhere. So as I said before, I have my table that I created of my countries right here. I have the table I created of my dates right here, the table I created of the different types of energy source, the units, which is another table and my data set of electricity that comes from the IEA file. Now, what you can do is these lines are the relationships. You have a relationship between the type of electricity and the raw type in this T types uh, table. There's another relationship that relates the month data from my data set of electricity to the full date in my table dates. And there's finally another relationship, so that's a total of three, that relates the country or the region from my electricity data set to the country or area in my big table of all the countries in the world. If we go back to the data set, before in the original file, you see something like this. There's a big table, you see the generation of electricity for that particular month, the change in percentage, the share of the total percentage of uh, electricity produced or consumed, the production year today, so on and so forth. So all of this is pretty much the same as what you saw before. However, what if I want to see back uh, total OECD countries? Now I have this addition to my report. These are slicers and these slicers are filtering the tables from the all the countries of the world for this one, this one, this one and this one and all the different dates of um, all the different years with this one and this one. So what I can do is I can change what I see here. These are numbers, but these belong to a specific uh, pivot table, as you can see here. The Microsoft Excel message cannot change this part of the pivot table report. So now these are not static numbers created by a macro. This is a pivot table, a live pivot table. So let's go back. Let's erase this filter. We're going to see OECD total. So I select OECD, you see OECD. For when? For April 2018. Okay, great. Now, these numbers are huge. Well, it's because I got them in gigawatt hours. I can change the units here, changes all the numbers here. By doing all of this, you can create something that is way more meaningful and more flexible to understand the data sets that you have. You can also, if you have this, you don't have to go and find the country that you were looking for. You can just come here and say, I want to see what's going on in Japan. Automatically, this is going to filter what I have here in my pivot table. It's going to show me the exact same information as the report the exact same numbers because they come from the same place. However, it's only in one single tab. It becomes a tool instead of a static report. That's the magic of it. If the numbers are too small, I can change the units. I can go for gigawatt hours here. There we go. That makes a little bit more sense. You can see the percentage. Total net production is 100% and 72.5 comes from non-renewables, 27.5 from renewables. And you can also see the losses in the network to understand the, the network of Japan, 4.1%, so on and so forth. Um, maybe I want to see the combination of two different countries. So let's say, let's say Japan and Korea, I can select them, two countries at once. And what this table is going to bring me is the combination, the totals of these two countries. So now this becomes more meaningful. So that's part of uh, what it means to give your data multiple dimensions. I could stop here, but there's a different way to look at things. What you can do is download Power BI 
Power BI is a free software from Microsoft as well, and grabs together the entire workflow of data management. Here, I also have my dates table that I used before, and I also have my countries table that I used before. I find them very useful to slice uh, the different countries and the different dates, just because they provide so many different columns of information to it. Then I have this table called D basic energy and then D energy consumption uh, OECD. So this comes from the, the energy consumption comes from the energy efficiency reports uh, from the IEA and D basic energy comes from the world energy statistics. Both of them have relationships to the countries and the dates table. So that means that I can combine the calculations between these two different tables, create measures and then put them on a report. In the end, what you can get with uh, Power BI is something like this, this kind of reports. I have a global map, I have a um, total number here, I have uh, this sort of like a funnel view of OECD, non-OECD non countries, I have the type of um, energy source, so maybe I just want to see the amount of exports in the world in thousands of tons uh, of uh, oil equivalent. I can select it and I can see it right here. And you can see how everything is connected, everything changes. But for now, let's look at electricity output in terawatt hours. So from 1970 to 2015, for the countries of the world, if I look at here in the total energy or electricity output, the US is number one. Then you have China, then you have Japan, then you have non-OECD Americas, Germany, Canada, France, Africa. So right there you have a Pareto, you have a, a histogram of uh, how the countries are arranged uh, across the list in terms of their electricity output. But you can see it here in the, in the map as well. You can see that the, the darker color is the country that has the most electricity output. And here you can see the funnel of OECD countries versus non-OECD. Um, Non-OECD is darker because there's a, a denser population here. So you can add that value here. You can add the dimension. I want to see the population as well, not only the electricity output. So the electricity output, most of it is coming from the least amount of people in the world. But more than that, I can go here. I can drill down. We see the Americas, Europe, Asia. You can see everything here. You can drill down to the next level. Developed countries versus developing countries. But for now, let's leave it at OECD versus non-OECD. In here, what are the sources of the electricity output? Well, you have fossil fuels, you have renewables and nuclear. You have seen that from 1970 to 2015, 65% of that has, has come from fossil fuels. But you see a big chunk of renewable sources right there, 20% and 14.5% 14, 14 for nuclear energy as well. And also you can see how it changes through time here with this chart. Let's say that this is interesting, but I'm doing a report in nuclear energy. So I, I'm only interested in the nuclear part. You click on nuclear, it's gonna filter everything in the other visuals as well. Here is just the nuclear fraction of the chart in terms of electricity output. And here is just the nuclear information per country. Flexibility is here. The point here is understanding how you can provide different dimensions to your data set train a little bit your technical side, but at the same time, you don't need to be in IT to do all of this. This is called self-service business intelligence. There's no need to be training how to write SQL or any particular thing. You just need to understand data, understand the software that you have. If you have Excel and you've been using Excel for decades now, you can still learn more about it. There are many more dimensions to see here. So that's the, the key of this conversation is the multiple dimensions to add to your data sets to bring more value to it, to increase the capability of developing insights. So that's all I had to say for today. Thank you very much. And uh, I appreciate your time for looking at this video. Thank you.